So about 10 um, on mandolin and upright at the same time. Okay. Did you start with like bluegrass or? My dad played in kind of like a bluegrass-esque acoustic bands, um, but I started in school doing like classical violin and then switched to bass pretty soon after that. And then mandolin, um, my teacher gave me a little bit of everything. It was some bluegrass, it was some classical, it was some folk. Um, so a little bit of everything at the same time. So how were you introduced to bluegrass? Um, probably through some bluegrass festivals. Um, Nickel Creek is what first got me going to music type things. Okay. And I think the first concert I went to was, um, Alison Krauss cool. in Union Station. I've never seen her. Um, so what would you say draws you to bluegrass music? I like the kind of the technical aspects of it and um, how much you you really have to um, you really have to practice stuff you really have to know it you have to get into um, the history of it and things like that but also today we have so many um, varieties of music that come into it and influence it and influence our playing um, so you've been playing since you were young mm-hmm how have you seen the bluegrass scene evolve? Um, my favorite thing is I've grown up in a generation of bluegrass musicians that kind of have come from the studying in school in addition to learning at festivals. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of my friends went to either jazz school or went to Berkeley 
um, and studied music in the academic academic world rather than just learning from a teacher by ear or learning at festivals and jam sessions. Um, so that's been really cool. It's brought a lot of different kind of styles and, and things into the music. So you're not from New York? No. Where are you from? I'm from Florida. So where, did you come here from Florida? Or? I did most recently, yeah. I was in grad school in Florida um, the last two years before moving here. So when you came to New York, why, why did you come here for music? So I moved here, um, I knew a little bit about the scene. I'd been up here, I visited. All my family is originally from Long Island. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd been up here a bunch and I'd heard the scene and I'd heard the players and um, the jam sessions and what was going on. Um, but I also was involved in like Broadway musical type stuff and mm -hmm. classical type stuff. And I knew that of all the cities in the country, this would probably want, be one of the easiest to make a living full time playing music. Um, so was it what you expected when you came here? or I expected, um, when I moved here, I brought my classical bass. I expected to hit up all my like musical um, contacts Mm -hmm. uh, use my old teachers and get into like the classical and um, kind of Broadway world first. That was what I was planning on doing. Mm -hmm. um, and within the first couple weeks I started getting three to five bluegrass and country gigs a week. I was playing like either classic country or like 90s country on bass guitar um, and then all the bluegrass stuff and then some jazz too but really I've done three or four classical gigs and very few musical or cabaret related things. So it's like the opposite of what I thought I'd be doing. Nice. Mm -hmm. So you used to live in Nashville. Yes. What was the scene like there? Nashville was a lot of, um, at least in the, the bluegrass world I was in, was a lot of touring musicians. It's very central. Um, there are gigs in town, um, not as many, um, especially to the ratio of number of players. Um, here there's way more gigs, um, probably less players in general, um, in specific genres. Um, but there, definitely, your, how you had to make a living was going from like band to band, trying to stay on the road. Um, the recording scene for new players coming in town is a tough one, um, mm -hmm. tough to break into, same as anywhere. Um, so it was just, yeah, mostly more, more touring based, I guess. Um, so there's like a pretty strong scene in New York. There's like a jam every night. Um, do you think like, why do you think it's able to do so well here? It's um, usually like affiliated with the South and yeah. Yeah. Um, I think part of it has to do with like the folk revival, um, which had, a, I mean, New York City was a major part in that. And so you had all these people coming up in that time period that just got drawn to mandolin and banjo and acoustic guitar. And they've kind of kept that scene going, um, whether it been the West Village or anything like that. So they, they took bluegrass and old time and folk music and country music and kind of just kept that tradition strong in the city. And so as more people came and as more um, bluegrass musicians, um, whether it be touring or living here, it was just kind of settled here. Um, okay, so you said that you grew up going to a lot of festivals and things. How do you think the festivals, like, regionally affect how the music changes? Um, well, I grew up, uh, I didn't go to many bluegrass festivals in Florida. Um, it was interesting. I, I went to more of the jam bandy, I guess like hippie festivals. Um, the headliners would be Nickel Creek and Bella Flag and Sam Bush, but there would also be Mofro and uh, Don of the Buffalo and, and some like funk bands and jam bands like that. Um, I didn't really go to any traditional bluegrass festivals until I moved to Nashville and started touring and playing them. Um, what was that like? That was different. That was uh, definitely an interesting thing. Um, and I always, I thought I'd played bluegrass, like I played more of the, the jam bandy bluegrass, more of the folk music, or um, I played a lot of dog grass, like David Grisman bluegrass, or Mike Marshall type stuff. Um, so as soon as I started doing the traditional bluegrass, it really made me appreciate where it came from. And I had a simple, 
simplify all my playing. I had to take out some of the jazz licks, the bass playing. I played maybe 20% of what I was playing before that. So it was really, really cool to get into that scene and learn from it. So what would you say was the initial draw when you were younger to playing? Um, probably just in school I was doing classical, which I really liked. It was a lot of fun playing in the symphony um, or playing, I played in jazz band too. Mm -hmm. um, but the bluegrass world where everyone gets to improvise and everybody gets to kind of arrange on the spot. It's a very creative outlet and a lot of fun to be a part of. I'm sorry about this next question. If you could describe bluegrass in one word or phrase, what would it be? Oh, that's a tough one. Bluegrass in one word or phrase. Sorry. I'm thinking of there's, there's like funny ones you could do. Yeah. You'd be like, son. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. No one um, said that yet. Yeah. I haven't heard that in a while. That was more, I hear that all the time in Nashville. Yeah. I you don't really hear that here. Um, I don't know, we're guessing one word. I'd say it's community. Cool. Um, okay, so you go to a lot of jams here. Mm -hmm. I see in the live streams. <laughs> um, are they like different than how jams are in Nashville and Florida? Yeah, yeah, a lot also. different. Um, the biggest thing is the venue. Um, in Nashville and Florida, most of the jams are people's houses. Okay. Because you can jam in someone's house, or if they have a decent sized property on their back porch, all day, all night long. Yeah. Um, so, a lot, little bit easier than being in a bar, or you really can't practice in an apartment after 10 p.m., or yeah. your neighbors are going to get really sick of you. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. So that was one of the biggest things. So it was more kind of like party type jam sessions where you'd be in a house and you'd have one jam up front and one jam out back and one jam in this room. So you could have five or six jams at one jam house party. Yeah. Um, so everyone kind of got to do what they wanted to do. If they only wanted to play like old time tunes, you could go into this bedroom. If you only wanted to play like David Grisman tunes, move to this bedroom. Nice. Um, so a little bit, you had a little more choice. Here you kind of had the house band and you get to join them. Yeah. Um, or the jam will evolve and things like that. But it's a little bit more, I guess you have more options in Nashville or Florida. Yeah. I didn't know that that was a thing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Super fun. And every night in Nashville, the best jams and the best parties were like Sunday to Tuesday. Because that that's when everybody got back to town. Yeah. So then, Sunday night you're coming back in the van or flying in and then the jam session will be that night or Monday night. And then, yeah. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a lot of fun. And none of them are in bars? Um, they do have bar jams. The one in Nashville now is um, the East Nashville, um, what is it called? Blanking on it. But it's every every Wednesday. And it, it used to be hit or miss. Um, oh, the American Legion Hall. And it used to be like some nights it would be great. And that was the one that evolved from like the five spot went there, um, but now they turned it into a, it's a jam session, but it's also a show. So they have like a headlining act, which could be Rhonda Vincent or something huge like that, and then like two or three bands opening. So, um, since the jam, since there's like a jam every night in a bar, like, that's kind of, it's kind of like an established jam already, um, what do you think that is, that effect is on New York and how the scene changes? Um, I think that effect kind of, you get more people coming in that aren't necessarily in the scene. Um, because people just stumble into the bar and they're like, oh, I hear a band. Let's see what's going on. And I've been at Mona's so many times where people are like, what is this? Yeah. What is going on? Where can I see more of this? Yeah. Um, I had someone come up, uh, last week at a show and they're like, I've played upright before, but I haven't for years. Like, how do I, where do I show up to start doing this? Yeah. Um, so it's really cool that in that way you can and you can live in a story and go to a jam. You can live in the Bronx and go to a jam. So it's not like you even have to travel that far to be yeah. in like to be part of it. If you're twenty one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um so you said you started out on like mandolin and mm -hmm. bass. You're now like primarily a bass player, right? Yes. Why did you change? Um, so I had a weird 
experience going into college, going into undergrad. Um, I was playing mandolin outside of school, doing festivals, doing uh, local bands, things like that. And then bass was only in school, only in orchestra and some jazz band. But I was playing electric mandolin in my jazz band as well. That's pretty cool. Um, Five string solid body. Nice. Um, Super fun. Don't see that a lot. No, no. And so... I had gone, my plan was to go to Florida State for commercial music, and um, you don't need to have an instrument at that point, but you do have to take two years of pretty much music performance, and take music theory, and history, and pass all that stuff, Mm. and so I went up and met the director, and I met the jazz people, and I was like, hey, I'd like to do this, but I play electric mandolin, like, um, how does that work, and so I came up, and I... I'd set in with a big band, I jammed with them, I, at that point I used to, used to know like all the bird tunes. Okay. And so we would just, we did a bebop jam for like an hour and the director's like, yeah man, you're just like one of the guitar players, you can, they didn't have a jazz guitar professor at that point. Okay. Um, so you would take one week with the bass player, one week with the sax professor, one week with the, and then once a month you'd drive out to Jacksonville with the other guitar players and take a lesson with the jazz guitarist. Okay. And um, so that was going to be the thing. Everyone was kind of excited about it because it's something different. Yeah. And uh, like three weeks before my audition, um, I got a call from the admissions program, the admissions department from the College of Music. Okay. And they said, yeah, we're not going to let you do that. Uh-huh. What else do you play? That's a bummer. So I was like, well, I played bass. They're like, okay, well, your audition is going to be on jazz bass. Nice. And... I had stopped playing bass that year, um, so I went up for a lesson and kind of just like went over what I'd need to do and everything, and then my audition was, I don't know, like 25 minutes or something. Five minutes of it was on bass, and 20 minutes of it was on mandolin. Nice. Because they are like, you can obviously play bass, what is your jazz rap like? And um, it was really fun, so that's when I switched to bass, I got a jazz scholarship for bass, so I had playing the big band and combos and things. Cool. Um, and I still played mandolin in like a Shoro band and a Bossa Nova band. I played in like folk bands, um, but bass kind of took over at that point. Also, being in Tallahassee, I was gigging a couple times a week too, on, and everyone needed bass, so. Do you know that guy, um, Grant, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, um, but he plays mandolin in Shoro music? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, very good. I, I wish I had kept it up. It's so much fun. Yeah, it was really cool. I saw him play once. Mm-hmm. Um, so do you have any, like, standout moments playing mainly in the New York scene? Um, in the New York scene, uh, getting the sub with the Jacob Jolliffe band was super fun. That's cool. Um, did a week with them um, this winter. Nice. Yeah, you were at one of those shows. Yes. So playing that music was definitely some of the most challenging music I've played in a while. Um, fastest music I've played in a while. Yep. Um, and then getting calls to play with uh, like Tony Trishka and, and um, Michael Daves is just like having heard them and seen them play for so many years. Like my dad was a banjo player, more a guitar player, but he took banjo lessons most of like since college. And so we got a ton of Tony Trishka stuff. Mm-hmm. And so when I get when I heard I was playing with him, I was like, oh, this is the coolest thing ever. And um, so it's been a lot of fun to get to work with them. Um, I think this is the last question that I have for you. But mm-hmm. what would you say is like the biggest difference in New York compared to like any other jam scene or festival scene you've seen? Let's see. New York is a place where, at least for like as a working musician, it's definitely a place where you can work, but you have to work so hard and all the time. Um, I mean, I I have five gigs this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Um, So it's just, you can, you can do it as a musician and, and there's always something to do and there's always musicians, there's always jams. Um, But it is definitely... Like, go, 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 all the time. Yeah. It seems like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, thank you very much for talking to me. Today. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.
Thank you. 